How's it going, my truant people? Dr. Slacking, the Slacking Doctor, back on Pokemon Showdown with week 8 of the LTC. That's the low tier championship. And today, today, the Lake District Spirits are taking on the Phoenix Soul Rocks, coached by my man, Nico. Nico? Nike? Nike? Nico, aka Pokemon Trainer Hakeem. You guys know him. He's the OG. He's the first person I ever spoke to in this draft community. He's the man that introduced me to Strumpful. He's the man that co-commissions the ABC with me. Uh, he's just one of my best friends, both online and just complete now. We, we, we talk most days. Very, very good friend of mine. And the person who I look forward to battling probably most, no disrespect to anybody else, but everybody knows that me and Nico just have bit of a rivalry, a bit of banter, and a bit of fun. So this one was so exciting. And his team is scary because Nico finally did the damn thing. He finally did the damn thing that he's supposed to do. When he was in Owl, he drafted lots of bulk. He draft, drafted like Mega Venusaur, Celesteela, Necrozma, fantastic Pokemon. They are not Nico Pokemon because Nico is a hyper offensive player who pressures you, who makes reads, who gets in your head, who just brings fun sets that catches you out. He's a good builder, he's a good battler. Uh, he's very different playstyle wise to me and he finally drafted a fairly offensive team with some of his staples and it is working pretty well for him. Going into this week, I believe we are both 3 and 4 looking to break even, looking to go 4 and 4 and looking to push on for playoffs. We both have a very good chance of playoffs if we can win against the other people playing for playoffs at this point. Um, and we were having a bit of banter before it, and he was saying you can't use your front office to build for this game and I said... The hell I can't. I'm going to use my front office to make sure I win this one. However, I forgot about the battle until the day it was supposed to happen. And then I pushed it back the next day and forgot about it again. So I didn't do any mocks. I didn't get any help from the front office other than the front office said to me, Hey, Swellow is really good in this matchup. Well, Swellow is really good in every matchup, but they were right. Um, and that was it. Other than that, I built the rest of the team entirely on my own. And in fact, even Swellow, I think I would have made that set regardless. So... This was a really kind of, is it Mano El Mano? Is that what they say? I don't know. But it was really me and him just going toe-to-toe -to -toe with our builds. Bringing, we promised some fun sets and we both did bring some fun sets as well. Uh, he said he was going to bring all six Scarf Mons against me and I believed it to some extent. He didn't in the end. Um, but I did think that it was a possibility. So here's exactly what I expected. And not the least... Uh, because he has some really great Scarf Pokemon. It wouldn't be bad to bring five or four Scarfers against me at all with these Pokemon. So, here we go. Uh, Absol. Absol is an underrated Pokemon, especially in the LTC. 130 special attack with knockoff in a format fairly dependent on a Violite is nothing to laugh at at all. That is really, really impressive. Um, so I expected to see Scarf Absol 100% and I expected to see knockoff, play rough, superpower, sucker punch. Sucker punch, although it sounds weird on a Scarf set, Priority is always nice against other Scarfers. Um, superpower to try and hit things like the Licky Licky, knockoff to take off my Violite and powerful stab, um, and play rough to try and hit the Sork. Uh, the only other move I could have seen running was some sort of Steel uh, type move. Uh, maybe Iron Tail, yeah that was the one. I can't remember if it was Iron Tail or Iron Head. However, I just thought Sucker Punch made more sense, and it was certainly a move that I played around very carefully. Next up uh, was Zangoose. This is his wall breaker. This is his offensive monster, and this thing, there's no switching. I don't have a switch in on my draft to Zangoose. We'll get to that in a minute, but it just doesn't exist. Zangoose is too, too strong in this format. It's broken. Um, I want it next season. I'm not going to lie to you, because it is a monster. I guess it is the physical counterpart to my Swallow, if you like. Uh, and with Quick Attack, Facade, Knockoff, and Swords Dance... <laughs> He could pretty much hit my whole team. Swords Dance, I didn't think was as likely as Close Combat, but I wanted to play around pretending he had Swords, but swords Dance just in case, because this is Nico, and if anybody would bring a Toxic or Toxic Boost Swords Dance set, it's Nico, and then Quick Attack probably just sweeps everything. I, I would think with a Toxic Boost and a Swords Dance up, it probably hits not far off as hard as like Lunoon Noon with a Belly Drum. It would not surprise me. It probably gets to like plus four attack. Um, crazy, crazy. So I could see that happening. I could also see a scarf with final gambit because again, this is Nico, and I could just see him doing that on something like um, my Blastoise that gets no recovery, for example. But for the most part, I just accepted him, expected him to be fast and offensive and spamming facade or quick attack. Um, next up was Electabuzz, and I thought Electabuzz would probably be a Violite, but because he had said this stuff about scarfers and just like Jolteon last week with Dreadful Dragonite, Electabuzz is such a great revenge killer for Swellow. 
I kind of half expected to see Scarf um, trying to catch me off guard where I thought maybe, you know, if he was in boom burst range, I could boom burst him and then he catches me with that Scarf Thunderbolt. So I was kind of expecting Scarf uh, Electabuzz as well, even though it was one of his best uh, switchings to Swallow in a way with a Violite. Uh, this thing has nice natural special bulk uh, with the Violite if you ran that set, but otherwise I expect to see special attacking with Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, Toxic just to wear down things uh, that might want to switch in, something like a Bullet Key, uh, maybe Camerupt for example that might want to come into this thing. I could also see it running HP Water for the Camerupt. However, I thought Signal Beam was very likely for the uh, Hypno, so it maybe would be Toxic or HP Water with Signal Beam, Volt Switch, Thunderbolt. That seemed most likely. Static is a really nice ability on some of my physical mons. Say I brought Flame Orb Swallow and I tried Facading before I got my Flame Orb up. He switches into Electabuzz and then he gets the Static off on me. Suddenly my uh, Gut Swallow, although it's got boosted, is a hell of a lot less threatening once it's paralyzed. This was one of his few bulky mons, uh, Eviolite Roselia. With that Spideth, it could maybe take a Boom Burst, although not especially well because it's low HP. So I did think that this might come. And it might be just like a Toxic Spike Spike set because Zangoose after Spikes and Toxic Spikes chip just eats everything. It's unbelievable. Um, Giga Drain, Sludge Bomb just for stab, essentially. Hauntor I thought would be Trick Scarf. I would have almost bet my house that he was going to bring Trick Scarf Hauntor because A, Nico loves Trick Scarf. He just loves it. B, he knows I hate Trick Scarf. He knows that some of my bulky mons that I've been trying to play with in recent times, like uh, Licky Licky, Blastoise, Hypno, he knows that when they get the Scarf tricked on them, they're essentially useless, and he knows how much I value those Pokemon. Um, so, And I know that he doesn't particularly like bulky Pokemon like that, so it would amuse him greatly to neuter them like that. Uh, I expect to see the movesets something along the lines of Dazzling Gleam or Psychic with Sludge Wave and Shadow Ball for Stab. Uh, the Dazzling Gleam or Psychic would be to hit the uh, Sork. It, either one really works. I don't think there's a power difference. Maybe Psychic has 10 more power, actually. Maybe it's base 90. Yeah, Psychic has more power. Don't know whether he had a reason to run Dazzling Gleam instead. I don't have a Dragon type, so probably not. So it probably would be Psychic over Dazzling Gleam anyway. Doesn't really matter. Next up was the Magmortar. Uh, and again, Magmortar could have been Scarf. It could have been Z Thunderbolt for the Blastoise. Um, or it could have been Assault Vest. Assault Vest was a set that scared me most because Magmortar genuinely is a very bulky mod. With base 75 HP and 95 Spadef. That 95 Spadef getting boosted up to, what, like, 140 with an, uh, an Assault Vest? 140 Spadef plus 75 HP is nothing to mock at all. That is very respectable. Um, and if you then put his HP full, this thing would, would potentially eat a lot of special hits. It was probably his best Swellow switch in. I don't know for sure, but I think there was a chance it could take two Boom Bursts from Swellow if rocks weren't up. Not 100% sure on that, though. Can't quite remember the calcs. Uh, if it was an AV set, I expected to see probably Flame Charge because if this thing gets a Flame Charge up and then starts Fire Blasting, especially because it could potentially be modest, um, it would just put in so much damage. It hits so, so hard. So I needed to make sure that I had switch-ins for Magmortar. Like last week, I needed Jolteon switch-ins. This week, I needed Magmortar switch-ins. I would have liked Zangu switch-ins, but they don't exist. So I needed Magmortar switch-ins. Uh, toxic would be to wear something sound. Obviously, you wouldn't wear Toxic with Assault Vest. But if he was a, uh, let's say... He was Electrium Z, then I could see him having Toxic on there. And I thought that was pretty likely too. Maybe Z Solar Beam, but uh, Thunderbolt just made more sense because that also hits the Swallow. So there we are. That's what I expected him to bring. And with that in mind, this is the build that I brought. Um, I went with Scar Swallow. I figured, well, hey, look, he's Scarf and everything, so let me Scarf something. His fastest one is 105, so uh, with the Electabuzz, so it's not very fast compared to the base 125 of Mariabella. Which means that to outspeed a timid Scarf Electabuzz, I could put a little bit of HP, but crucially, I could run Modest. So whilst I would like to have been, say, timid Specs in most matchups, in this matchup, the fact that I could run Modest did mean that running Scarf wasn't so bad. So I quite liked that. Uh, he didn't have super bulky Spadef Mons beyond that Magmortar, as I've already said. So I didn't really need the Specs damage either. Boom Burst, Hurricane, U-Turn, Roost. Again, just like last week, the only move I ever intended to click was Boom Burst, but Roost was on there if I ever felt a little bit cheeky. If this was getting worn down by rocks, say, uh, maybe I could get a little bit spicy and get some Roosts off on something, but it was pretty unlikely. Next up, we have Sean, uh, my man Blind Messiah. Um, we have this set to basically switch in on Magmortar, um, also to switch in on... 
Electa Buzz as well, um, because Electa Buzz, just like last week with the Jolteon, is a good revenge killer for Maria Bella. So this was probably our most dedicated Electa Buzz switch in. Even a Signal Beam wouldn't hurt too bad. Uh, we're running Max Spadef with a Calm Nature, because there was really no reason to do anything else. I would love for it to have been a Zangu switch in as well, but there's no way in hell, even if we're in physical defense. So we just ran with this. I actually decided to go for Warn on this, because I didn't think he would put me to sleep with anything. He could have had Hypnosis Haunter. Um... I don't know if Rosalia gets Sleep Powder, maybe, but that didn't seem like Nico's style. So for Warm would just let me know things like uh, potential Focus Blast, Magmorta, uh, potential Close Combat, Zangoose, things like that. And that might tell me if Zangoose had Swords Dance, for example. This set was just supposed to basically be bulky with Wish, Toxic, Protect, and then Psy Shock so it wasn't complete Taunt Bait. Uh, the Wish would be really nice for the Blastoise, that was what I was hoping to wish into or medium Steve, and we'll get on to why that was the case later on. But next up, let's move on to our offensive one. Um, and this one was kind of due to some talks that I had with uh, Checkmate Ben before the battle about completely other stuff, about how you break walls and how you pressure certain Pokemon, um, and some things that he was kind of teaching me. So this is why we decided to bring this exact Ramble set. It was kind of an experiment of me trying to try a new style, um, and you'll see in the battle whether it worked or not. I decided to run Rattled rather than Intimidate so that I could switch in on a uh, potential knockoff um, Absol because although I didn't want to lose my choice band, I would if I had to, and also on potential Sucker Punch Absol. Uh, just like against uh, Sean week one, which was our first win, one of only two legit wins uh, this season. Uh, oh my goodness, last week against Dreadful Dragonite, I got the scores wrong because I got a forfeit win, didn't I? So actually, going into this week, was I already 4-4 four and four going into this week? Did I not need to win this game to break even? I don't even know, guys. Maybe I've got the scores wrong because I forgot we got that forfeit win. So we... No, that is right. We went to 3 last week, and then this week, if we could win it, we would go to 4 to break even. Yeah, that's definitely right. The Yeah, okay. Ignore me. I'm having a little moment. Moving on. Uh, so the reason this kind of pressures things is the best switch into ground ball on his draft is Magmortar. So if my two kind of breakers share the same switch in, it has to switch into both. And Magmortar gets no recovery and is weak to rocks. So the way I saw it, well, look, if I can keep getting Maria Bella in and Checkmate in, and I keep clicking Boom Burst or play Rough, Magmortar has to keep coming in repeatedly and it's taken massive damage. So we decided to run Banded Gramble. Um, yes, this thing was probably my best Zangu switch in. I was considering something like an Intimidate. Um, what's the berry... That resists normal. It's like, uh, is it Chillon Berry? Yeah, so we were thinking, or I was thinking about running um, Intimidate Chillon Berry. That's what I decided at the start of the season when I saw Nico's team, I would run when I faced him. Uh, but because I was trying out this new thing that Ben had been teaching me about, I decided to run this set instead. Earthquake was uh, if I wanted to make a read that I thought the Magmortar was coming in and just go for broke. Crunch was to hit the uh, Haunter, which I figured was his other best switch into me. And Ice Punch was to hit the Roselio, which was his final switch into me. Yes, this thing uh, had Haunter as a potential switch in, but Haunter is so frail. The only other two are Roselio and Magmortar, which Maria Bella wanted those out of the way anyway. So that's why we have Banded Gramble, just for maximum damage. I hope that set makes sense. And the speed was to speed creep uh, Roselia. So that's why we have that. Um, it was a weird one, but I hope you guys are kind of digging that. Next up we have J Creeps at Blastoise, and this was an AV Mon. Whilst it would be nice to not run AV on this, uh, this week I wanted it to be a Magmorta switch in. I wanted it to live Thunderbolts. I wanted it to just get rid of Magmorta. As I said, that was my win con in a way, was getting rid of Magmorta. Uh, so we have Scold, Ice Beam, Dragon Tail, Rapid Spin, Dragon Tail to kind of uh, phase set up Mons, but also to cycle some things around, rack up some uh, Stealth Rock damage. Ice Beam for coverage for the Roselia, which seemed like a good switch into this. Scold to get some burns uh, to potentially burn the Toxic uh, or Zangoose if he decided to bring it in on this and not protect turn one. Maybe I could get a Scold before it's Toxic or popped. Things like that. Uh, rapid Spin just to clear away hazards. Medium Steve. Now, this was our only Zangoose check on the draft, and it was not a good Zangoose check, if I'm honest. Uh, I think Knockoff still had a chance to two hit KO, potentially, if not guaranteed two hit KO. Um, but, no, I don't think it guaranteed. I think it had a chance to 2-hit KO. If not, it was a 3-hit KO. So, really, this thing struggled against Zangoose, especially because I'd have to switch in, and I wouldn't do that much damage. Um, so, Meteor Mash into Bullet Punch, plus, like, three turns of toxic damage does take Zangoose out, I believe. That was the plan, but it would be kind of trading one for one. It's like, okay, you're going to lose your Zangoose, I'm going to lose my Matang. 
but at least I haven't lost half my bloody team to Zangoose. Um, that's kind of how this set worked. Zen Headbutt was for the Roselia because that seemed like a good potential switch into this. And Stealth Rock was just, as I say, to kind of help, pay, uh, help out Checkmate and Maria Bella pressure the McMortar. Last up on the draft, we have Foster Cryogonal. Uh, this, again, uh, was for the exact same reason I brought Checkmate. It was to really pressure certain things. And the last Pokemon, which I didn't discuss in the team builder, which I thought had a chance of coming, but I wasn't super sure, was his Gabite. Um, and although I had an Ice Beam on this, the rest of the team, a play rough, I guess, the rest of the team didn't handle Gabite super well. Um, so this was a, my final Magmortar pressure on Gabite check. His best switch into Cryogonal was Magmortar yet again. Uh, he doesn't have a Steel type on his team, which is why he doesn't have anything to switch into an Ice and Fairy super well. Um, so Specs Blizzard, exact same logic as Banded play rough, just to get maximum damage on that incoming Magmortar, whatever his set is. Knock off if I want to read it, and I think it's AV rather than um, Z, which again, I would have to have seen something to indicate that before I ever click knock off, but just maybe. Um, and then Defog and Toxic if I felt like getting rid of Hazards or I felt like getting spicy with a Toxic on something coming in. But realistically, just like Checkmate's always going to click Play Rough, Byron Bella is always going to click Boom Burst, Foss is always going to click Blizzard and try and, uh, try and rip a hole through his team as well with that powerful, powerful stab. All that being said, guys, let's jump into the battle. I hope you like this team. It's super weird. I'm trying some new tactics. Obviously, this is modest as well to try and pressure things, massive damage output. Let's see if it works. So here we are in the battle, guys. And as you can see, he brought pretty much everything I expected, uh, apart from the Gabite. Uh, it surprised me a little bit inside the Roselia, just because I felt like Roselia had the hazard stack. But of course, Gabite has rocks, which actually pressures Swellow more. So in a way, that made more sense. I was probably a little bit foolish expecting the Roselia. But I could have seen both coming. I could have maybe seen the Roselia over... Actually, none of his offensive mods. His offensive mods are also good against me that, yeah, I thought it would either be the Gabite or the Roselia. Anyway, uh, looking at his team, I realized that clearing the Magmortar, making sure I was out of Sucker Punch plus Quick Attack range, meant that Mariabella could just punch through this whole team, watching it out for um, other things like Bulky Gabite as well. So they were the things that I really wanted to pressure. So turn one... Uh, we actually led with Hypno, I believe. And the reason that I chose to lead with Hypno here, which might seem super weird, um, is that it just gave me a really bulky option to start with. I could potentially just throw up a wish and then switch into whatever I thought was best, restore them back to full, and we'll play from there, essentially. Uh, I believe that was my lead anyway. But as we can see... Uh, no, it was Foss, sorry. I do apologize. I led with Foss just for big damage, but Foss has no physical defense. And this seemed like a great opportunity to try and get myself to plus one speed, even if I lost my choice band. However, he did go for the superpower, uh, which didn't overly surprise me. Uh, but what that meant is I could just fire off a big crunch on whatever was coming in. I knew he wouldn't stay in, so I didn't see the point of clicking play rough. Uh, I figured either this or the Haunter had to come in and crunch would do massive damage to either of them. As we can see there, that did 57% um, to the Magmortar. We don't see lefties pop, so it's either Z or Assault Vest, I assume. And I'm feeling pretty good about that play. I'm like, right, that's one of the... Things that I wanted to pressure from the off, pressured, it's done. I've, I've already done my job. Brilliant. Turn two or turn three, uh, and we've already got what we wanted. No, turn two, and we've already got what we wanted. So now I have to switch out, but I have my dedicated uh, Magmore to switch in, and that is the Blastoise. As you see, that is 12%. It is literally nothing with that AV on there. And we just fire off a Scold because we we have no reason not to. We might snag a burn or something. Electabuzz could have been a physical attacker. It's, it does get Thunder Punch and things. And we have our dedicated Lectabuzz check, which is our Spideff Hypno Sean, which takes 18%. A little bit more than I would have liked, actually, there, but it's not terrible. And he goes back out into the Absol, but Absol's not really an issue for my team. I just go out into Blastoise here, because Blastoise has kind of done its job. Magmortar at 50% can't switch in on anything again, so I'm really not concerned about it. I don't need a Magmortar switch in anymore. I know that it's going to get pressured by rocks and everything else. So he goes out into the Hypno, which of course he's nicknamed after, uh, out of the Hypno into Haunter, which he's nicknamed after me. And he goes for the Thunderbolt on my Blastoise. I go out into Foss because Foss is especially bulky and can take anything. And maybe I want to keep Blastoise around for later on. We fire off the Blizzard there on the switch into Magmortar. And here we see the game plan just completely come into fruition. One of the major defensive and offensive checks to my team hasn't done anything more than 13% to a Blastoise yet. And it now has only lived on 1%. So even though we're firing off resisted hits or uh, non-stab neutral hits, we've just done enough to pressure it with that specs and band on our two uh, wall breakers here. He does live on 1%, which is really, really unfortunate. 
Uh, but it's okay because we can go out into Hypno at this point, which I feel fairly secure with, knowing that he's not going to do too much. The Fire Blast pops for 35%, so it's pretty powerful. But we can live another one, and we can just finish this thing off. So we go for a Wish here, because we can Wish Protect and, and beat this thing that way. But he actually taunts me. That's fine. And, I, and here I think to myself, okay, so he's taunted me, and he's going to think, what, like, Wish, Toxic, Protect. Um, wish, Toxic, Protect. Baton Pass, maybe. Uh, any number of other sort of status -y type moves. So I thought that he might stay in here thinking that I had to switch. But of course we did bring that Psy Shock so that we weren't uh, Taunt Bait. He misses the Fire Blast which is really, really unfortunate. And we fire off the Psy Shock. In the long run that didn't really matter too much. It would have pressured me a little bit putting me down to 35% health or well, about 40% health after leftovers. But it wouldn't really have mattered too much. And Sean proving that he should never be taunted. Sean hates being taunted. And we just sack off Jay Creams here because it isn't really that useful now that the Magmortis gone Blastoise isn't essential in this matchup. And it gives me a free switch into something that I know outspeeds the, uh, the um, Absol or at least pressures it. So we go into Checkmate. If he clicks Knockoff again, which I'm almost certain he's scuffed into that Knockoff, then we get our plus one Rattled Boost and we potentially just sweep through his team at that point, uh, even without our Choice Band. Uh, but instead he goes out into the Haunter. We of course fire off a play rough because it will take out the Haunter at that range anyway as it does. And it will hit the uh, Gabite to take that out or hit the Electabuzz to take that out. We can't live a facade unfortunately so I go out into Sean. This is just a sack. I don't need Sean. All I want is a free switch into Matang. Uh, which this gives me. So Matang can come out here and I realise that actually I can live any two hits from this thing. So what I can do is I can click Stealth Rock, then I can Meteor Mash, then I can Bullet Punch. And from all those turns, he would have taken enough Toxic damage uh, to just drop, I believe, with the Meteor Mash and Bullet Punch damage. If not, um, enough that I can just sack off another Mon and then Maria Bella pretty much cleans up. So we do exactly that. We go for our Rocks turn 1 and he actually switches, which is perfect for me because it means I get to preserve Medium Steve as a switch in later on. He fires off an Earthquake and I don't preserve Venus Steve. Actually, I just go for damage on the Gabite, that's why. Because I realise that Gabite is probably the only thing that doesn't drop to a Swallow Boom Burst. Um, I am still potentially going to drop to a Toxic Boosted Quick Attack and a Sucker Punch. But that's okay because I still have two other um, very, very hard hitting ones here. So we just go for the Meteor Mash for maximum damage. You can see the Earthquake isn't even a two hit KO, so we really didn't have too much to fear. We fire off another Meteor Mash here. Which only does a little bit to Electabuzz, and I believe we switched this time uh, so that we can still take one more facade from the uh, Zangus. I know that this thing can't touch Foss, and it did carry the signal beam for the Hypno, but a Blizzard drops it, so that's just fine doing the 51% there. We got super lucky landing all our Blizzards, so I won't pretend otherwise. But it, uh, I don't know how much difference it would have made. If he Volt switched here and went out into the Absol, I would have had to go back into the. Gramble, uh, but you know, there, there were there were ways I could still play around this, uh, but we did get lucky landing all our blizzards, I won't pretend otherwise. Uh, we do drop him with the blizzard though, and he brings out the Zangoose, um, and at this point I think I can just stay in and click blizzard, and he predicts me to switch, I believe, um, so he doesn't click, no, he, uh, well I'm not sure, he either predicted me to switch, or he did say something about forgetting he wasn't Scarf, even though he was Toxic Orb, he said he misplayed at one point, and that might have been the turn. Um, however, I just bring in Medium Steve again if he kills me um, with Quick Attack, which I'm sure he would have done because uh, Foss has no physical defense. Um, and then again, we just rinse repeat with uh, the Matang. So it wasn't hugely game changing there, but it does just mean that Foss gets to pick up another kill. And once again, I just stay in and click Blizzard. There's no reason for me to read anything. He does lock himself into Sucker Punch, revealing that he has that. Um, and I realize now that Mario Bella can't come in, but if he sucker punches checkmate, I get the plus one speed. Thank you very much. So we go into checkmate and we lock ourselves into play rough. Nothing on his team can really live that anyway at this point with just the goodbye and the Absol left. He brings out the goodbye, sacking that. And I expect to see the Iron Tail here from the Absol by the way he preserved the Absol rather than staying in on sucker punch. Um, I figured that must be what he was thinking here. Um, so I expect to see the Iron Tail, but there's really nothing I can do about that. If he locks himself into Iron Tail, I know I outspeed with Swallow. I know he can't sucker punch me because I'm certain he's Scarf. Um, especially because he keeps switching it out on Gramble rather than Iron Tailing it. Um, so I'm pretty safe here just letting Gramble drop to the Iron Tail and then Revenge Killing with Boom Burst. At the worst case, I can maybe Bullet Punch it down with a bit of Chip. Um, 
with Matang. I don't really know, but I think we were fine here. And he actually shows that he has the Zen head, but not the Iron Tail, I believe. However, uh, it might have been that he had the Iron Tail. Instead, he realized that Iron Tail wouldn't beat the rest of my team, and his win con was to try and flinch me down. If that is what he was doing, that's a completely fair play. Um, I understand entirely why he did that, but he missed. Super unfortunate, and we dropped him with the play rough. Uh, the miss sucked, but at the same time... He would have had to Zen headbutt flinch the Gramble, which I think lived one. Then he would have to Zen headbutt flinch... Uh, well, he wouldn't He wouldn't be able to Zen headbutt flinch the Swallow, because they are outsped with Scarf. He didn't know I was Scarf Swallow, because Swallow never came out this battle. But he would have seen that, and so the Zen headbutt miss really, really didn't matter. Um other than differential if he had got the flinch. So yeah, we get the 3-0 win. Uh, we are now 4-4. Four and four. Amazing. Uh, three legit wins and one a forfeit win, unfortunately. But still, we are 4-4 four and four in the LTC. Finally breaking even again. Finally getting a little bit of luck. Uh, because I definitely did get some luck landing those blizzards. Him missing the fire blast. Him missing the Zen headbutt to keep a differential. There were all these little bits of luck throughout the game without a shadow of a doubt. However... I would argue that these 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 small bits of luck I've also had go against me in some other battles. So I feel like it's kind of evened out now and we break even. And I feel like we are starting to get the results our performances deserve. Two back-to-back -back wins uh, is, is super nice. Something we haven't done in the LTC at all, of course. So that feels really, really good. And now we have an amazing chance at playoffs. We have an awesome chance at playoffs. It is going to be either ourselves, Sean, aka the Blind Messiah, uh... Rob, aka Rocky Rolo, or Toasty, aka Toasty Rex. One of us three should make playoffs along, or two of us three perhaps, should make playoffs alongside Checkmate Ben in our conference. I still have to play Toasty and Rob. So two of my three rivals for those playoff spots, I still have to play. And the third rival, Sean, we already played week one and we beat, so we are ahead of him on head to head, which it will come down to if we're level on results. So. I feel pretty good about our chances. If we can beat either Toasty or Rob, we have an amazing chance at playoffs. Our last game is against Devious Ditto, who is a very good battler, but has been short of form in the LTC. I think he only has two wins all season, so he's not playing super well. That's our last week of the season. By that point, I suspect he won't be able to make playoffs unless he strings together some really good results now. So I really hope that if we are playing for playoffs in the last week against someone who's not even in playoff contention anymore, we can push on and win that one. Fingers crossed. So one more win against either Rob or Toasty should put us in playoffs. It should. Fingers crossed. Especially given that uh, Toasty plays Checkmate Ben and Elliot or Socrates. And uh, Rob plays Elliot and or Socrates and Checkmate Ben or something like that. Basically, these people, the, my opponents are playing... Other people in the league who are pretty much undefeated, who have only lost either through forfeits or haven't lost yet, or have only lost like one game. So they are going up against arguably, well, they are going up against the top three battlers in the league. And me. So I have a chance to beat my nearest rivals. They have super hard fixtures. And uh, we go up against Devious Ditto, who is a super hard fixture. I'm not going to pretend otherwise, but a game that I really want to try and win. This is a very rambling roundabout way to say, I hope you guys are hyped because I am so hyped that we have an excellent, excellent chance to make a playoffs for the first time on the channel. It would be amazing to do it in this league, in a low tier league. I've always loved PU. It's the only showdown format I've ever really engaged with along with LC. Um, and it would be amazing to make playoffs in Foss's league, being such a good friend of mine and a former uh, OWL teammate as well. So there we go, guys. I'm gonna stop rambling because I'm sure you are all very, very bored by now. GG to my man, Nico. Um, you know I love you, uh, I'm 2-1 up now, which feels really, really good, but this was a great game, and you definitely got unlucky, and I expect you will get me back very, very soon, um, there's no way I'll continue a positive record against Nico, but there we go. Thank you so much for looking around with me, guys, I hope you enjoyed this battle, I hope you're hyped for the next two weeks where we go up against our playoff rivals, I hope you're hyped to see this last bit of the LTC campaign. I'll catch you again next time.